Namaste. Welcome to yoga. This ancient wisdom practice that recognizes that absolutely everything is made of the same universal energy, including us. That oneness manifests in this infinite diversity of form that comes and goes endlessly. And each one of us as a particular form um, is a unique part of the whole. So we're not separate. We belong exactly as we are to this great oneness. And it's the chakra system, right? These spinning vortices of um, multidimensional energy mapped along the human spine that provide the interface between the universal and the particular. You know, the word yoga, I'm imagine you're aware, the root is yug in Sanskrit, which means yoke. So there are many ways, practices, spaces where we recognize and actively participate in that overlap between the vastness and the unique and the particular. And hatha yoga is one of them. And attending to the chakras during our asana practice can strengthen um, the energy and attention that's going into that yoking, that interface. So in this practice, we're gonna play with Manipura chakra, which is the third chakra. Manipura means lustrous gem or radiant jewel golden glowing yellow. That's what we get to picture right here in our solar plexus. So it's said that the third chakra is really the space between the navel and the sternum, this whole dynamic area. Um, and so sometimes it's also called the navel chakra. And Manipura, this space in our being is fire, the sun, heat, transformation, right? This is where we metabolize and digest. It's like the engine of our transformative processes. We digest not just our food, but all of our experiences, all of the stimuli and impressions and things we go through. There's this transformative engine that works um, to transform everything into this integrated oneness we are, even as we're having our unique experiences. So as with all the chakras, there are many ways to align, strengthen, balance, um, pay attention to um, Manipura chakra. One way is just a regular asana practice. We come to our mats and we practice. That's already taking really good care of our chakras. Also working with mudra, right? Hand gestures and um, pranayama, working with the breath. So we'll do a little bit of all three in this practice. If you would please have two blocks, I think that would be good, a strap, and then something to sit on to elevate our sit bones to really find that nice tall spine. And if you'd be willing, as you take this first comfortable seat, if you'd be willing to take Sukhasana. So Sukhasana is cross-legged. The knees come in a little bit narrower than when our knees are wide. Um, but then you really wanna make sure to sit on something because bringing the knees in can even cause more of a tendency of this lower back to round out. So sit on something, so you can draw the sacrum in, lift the sternum, a little bit of flexion in the feet, and then we're gonna work with a mudra here in our meditation for these first few minutes. So Matangi Mudra is said to balance Manipura. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our hands and we're just gonna interlace all of our fingers, either way, whichever one calls to you, and then you're gonna take your middle finger and you're gonna lift it and press the finger pads into one another and lay the rest of your fingers down. So a couple different angles so you can see. Matangi Mudra. And then we're gonna place that right at Manipura in our solar plexus. Welcome to bring the elbows in just to hug the sides of the body for a little bit of support as we hold our hands. Take a nice big inhale. And on an exhale, slowly allow your eyes to close and come within your own being and just arise. 
Take some slow, deep, even breaths. Let the eyes be soft and the muscles around the mouth. Relax the hinge of the jaw. And see if you can let the tongue be passive on the bed of the mouth, really relaxed from tip to root. And then bring your awareness all the way down to your sit bones and root them down into the earth, right? First chakra, our base, our ground, the earth. Pressing down to lift tall. Maybe noticing if as you breathe on the inhale, there's that wave motion down into the pelvic floor, gently opening and widening that space at the base of the spine. And then bringing your awareness up to your lower belly beneath the navel, the second chakra, and just allow the belly to be soft enough that the tummy can move in and out as the diaphragm moves down on the inhale and back up on the exhale. And then bringing your awareness up to Manipura, the solar plexus, just see what it's like to rest your attention, this glowing fire in the center of our being, as you gently hold the mudra, relax the shoulders. Just be right here and breathe. Smooth, deep, even breaths in through the nose and out through the nose. And then take another deep inhale, filling up. And on an exhale, just allow the mudra to dissolve, to melt, hands come down on your thighs. And as you continue to breathe, just observe what's happening now here in your being. And then take another nice inhale, filling up all the way to the top. And on the exhale, lift your hands, join your palms, move them into the center of your chest. And then another deep inhale. And on your exhale, just slowly bow the head down, down to the wisdom of the heart. And on your next inhale, slowly bring the head back up. Release your hands down to your thighs. Slowly open your eyes. Thank you. Let's switch our legs and take Sukhasana on the other side. Little flexion in the feet, draw the knees close. Tall spine. We're gonna place our hands with palms up. We're gonna work with Kapalabhati Pranayama just for a short while. Breath of fire, also known as skull shining breath. And this is, we just do it for 30 seconds. It's very energizing and powerful. So some people should not do this pranayama. So if you're pregnant or if you have high blood pressure or any kind of spinal or respiratory disorder, I would love for you to do slow, deep breathing and just listen to my breath. If that doesn't apply to you, let's have at it. <laughs> See how this goes. So um, breath of fire is like panting through the nose. We let the belly be relaxed. We inhale, letting the belly come out passive. And on the exhale, we snap the belly back in towards the spine. Um, it can be slow, it can be fast. So first just listen to the sound of the rhythm. So the impetus for the action is coming from my belly. On the exhale, I'm drawing the belly in strongly. So let's try that together. We'll do it for about 30 seconds. So start by taking a nice deep inhale. Exhale all the breath out. Inhale halfway. 
and then start your breath of fire. Take a few more breaths, just like that. And then take a nice deep inhale, fill the body up, hold it at the top, hold it for another second. And then on an exhale, let the air out. And then we're gonna reach the arms out to the sides, lift them up, palms turn in, straight arms, bicep right by the ears, and then root down like you're standing on the sit bones to lift through the side body. Super straight arms. Lift your gaze, looking up past your fingertips. Can you find even a little bit more length? Slowly bring the head forward. Take an inhale here. And on an exhale, we're gonna open the arms and twist to the right. So just bring your left hand outside your right knee and find a gentle first twist not sacrificing any of the length in the spine. The crown of the head is rising tall, both sit bones rooting down, and then using the leverage of the hand to twist at the waist, just turn your head gently side to side. Make sure you're not yanking on the head. The head is following the rotation from the base of the spine. Lift the sternum. Take one more breath. Then keep your body here. Just slowly look forward over your left shoulder. Allow the body to follow. Nice tall spine. And then inhale, reach the arms out and up. All the way up, palms turn in. Again, find the length through the side body, lifting the heart, the ribs. Look up, reach up past your fingertips. Slowly bring the head down. Take an inhale here. And on an exhale, slowly twist to the left. Right hand comes outside, left knee, opposite hand is behind you. And then again, root down through both sit bones, line the spine up, reaching up through the crown of the head, gently twisting at the waist. You might just nod your head gently to make sure you're not yanking on the neck or the head. Eyes soft, breathing. Take an inhale here, and then exhale, look over your right shoulder. Allow the body to follow. Really nice. So we're gonna come down on our backs. If you have your block nearby, we'll use it in a moment. We're gonna take Supta Baddha Konasana. So soles of the feet together, knees are wide. You can rest that one hand on the navel, the other hand on the solar plexus. Allow your shoulders to drop back. Close your eyes and just land inside yourself again. So feel the contact points with your back body into the earth and allow the weight to sink down. Soft eyes, soft jaw. Relax the feet. And just allow gravity to gently open the knees down. And then bring your awareness to your lower back. So just make sure you have the natural curve in your lumbar spine. So the lumbar spine probably is not touching the floor. There's a little arch. But see if you can press your mid back slightly down. Take a relaxed inhale. And on an exhale, keeping the curve of the back, just draw the belly in down to the spine. Inhale, soften the belly. Exhale, draw the belly down without flattening the sacrum. Try that a couple more times. Just finding this core deep center, activating the muscles, keeping the curve of the lower back. One more. And then go ahead and blink your eyes open. Reach your hands around your outer thighs. Draw the knees together, feet come flat. Just take a moment here in constructive rest. And then you're gonna find your block and you're gonna place it the long, narrow way between the knees and the thighs. Reach your arms straight out to the side from your heart and then turn your palms down. Draw your shoulder blades together on your back. Keep the natural curve of your spine as you engage the belly just to lift the, the shins. 
So they're parallel with the floor, thighs are perpendicular, flex the feet, and then you're just gonna scoot your hips about an inch to the right. Take an inhale here, and on an exhale, start to bring the knees down over to the left, hugging the block, straight out from the hips or a little bit higher. Keep drawing that right shoulder blade down. So we're in our Jatara twist. Stay here, or you might play with straightening the legs. We're hovering the feet or the knees above the ground. We're not letting them rest, right? We're using these deep twist muscles. Couple more breaths here. You can keep the legs straight or you can re-bend them. And then slowly bring the knees back up to center. Place your feet down, scooch back to the center. Bring the, the shins back up. And then just lift your hips to scoop about an inch to the left. Inhale here. And on an exhale, start to bring the knees down, straight out from the hips over to the right. Hugging the block, drawing that left shoulder blade back and down. Hovering your knees, staying here, or if you want a little bit more, you play with straightening the legs. Reaching through your flexed feet, either way. We're gonna take a few more breaths. You can keep the legs straight or you can re-bend them. And then slowly bring the knees back up to center. Feet down, come back to the center, and we're gonna remove the block. And then we're gonna bring our knees right back up, just where they were. Natural curve still in the lower back, but drawing the belly in. We're going to reach our hands, fingertips behind the back of our head, little spidey fingers. And on an inhale, lift the shoulders. But make sure you're not flattening the sacrum. Can you keep that curve in the lower your back? And then you're going to take an inhale here. And on an exhale, straighten the right leg. Cross your right shoulder outside the left knee. Inhale to center. Exhale, find the other side. Inhale, center. Slowly back over to the left and then keep going. I like to go really slowly here to be mindful, drawing the belly in, keeping that curve in the lower spine, noticing if the knees want to really come forward to the elbows. Can you keep the thighs perpendicular, but as you lift, bring your elbow up and outside the knee and then move slowly like you're going through, I don't know, sunlit water or honey. And just take your time, and we're just going to do a few more of these little yogic bicycles, seeing if we can lift both shoulders a little bit, although that's hard. Okay, we're going to do one more each side, waking up the core. Okay, I lied. One more to the left, and one more to the right. Oh, and then come back to center, hug your knees in. Oof. Roll around on your lower back a little bit if that feels good. And then we're going to straighten the legs, straighten the arms, stretch the front of the whole front of the belly, reach the arms overhead, take a nice big inhale, exhale, tongue out, lion's breath. One more. And hug your knees in, hands behind the thighs, rock and roll forward and back a couple times. Oh, that yummy massage for the spine. Let's do one more of those. And then come on up, swing your legs around, and let's find our child's pose, Mandukasana. So towards the back of the mat, big toes touch, knees are wide. Sit your hips down on your heels and then lay your body down between the thighs. Arms forward, elbows down. And really let the back body sink down into the front body, into the earth. And deep breaths around the back of the hips, into the sacrum, the belly soft, forehead resting firmly down. You can use a block if your forehead doesn't quite reach. Take a few breaths here. Landing inside yourself again. Then stay right here, but look up. We're going to reach our arms forward. Hands are shoulder distance. Spread the palms. Bring the forehead back down. Now take a moment to really crawl your fingertips forward to see how much length you can find through the side body. As you keep the hips heavy, down over the heels. And then press all the fingers, the knuckles, the rim of the palm. Hug the outer arms in firmly. Roll your triceps down to broaden the upper back and then repress the index finger and thumb. 
and keep the feel of the hands super straight arms and press up to all fours. So walk the knees in, knees are hips distance under the knees, wrist creases right under the shoulders and parallel with the front of the mat. So most of us have to turn our hands out a little bit. And then on an inhale, start to bring the chest forward, the groins go back, cow. Exhale, press the palms, coil the navel in, big cat back. Inhale slowly, coming into cow, take your time. Exhale, pressing and rounding, back into cat. And then do a few more, again, like you're moving through this sunlit water or honey. Some thickness that slows us down and makes us more present and measured. Not wanting to miss an increment of breath or opening or movement. And then coming back to a neutral spine, walk your hands forward a couple inches, spread the palms, tuck your toes if you don't have them tucked already, really straight elbows, press the hands and slowly lift the hips up and back, Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And if you like to pedal or wiggle, sway the hips, bend the knees, whatever feels good to find your way in. But then eventually coming to stillness, because as we press the hands forward and down, opening under the armpits, lifting the hips up and back, breathing open the backs of the legs, so pressing the upper thighs back, standing on your inner foot, big toe mount and inner heel, pressing right up into the inner groins to lift the hips up and back. Lengthen the spine, gazes back between the feet. Slowly. Shoulders loosening, opening, legs loosening, opening. And then on an inhale, we're just going to glide forward, come into plank pose. Again, wrist creases parallel with the front of the mat, right under your shoulders. The gaze is slightly forward. So see if you can find that long line through your body where you're reaching back through the heels, forward through the crown of the head, but then drawing. First, second, third, fourth chakra, up and in to support the pose from underneath. Breathing, finding your center, finding your strength. As we stay here for a few more breaths, right, just to recall Manipura is personal power, purpose, will, the will to stay even in some heat. And then slowly lift the hips up and back. Downward facing dog. <sighs> and then put a slight bend in the knees, look forward, step one foot and then the other to the front of the mat, feet hips distance, put a little bend in your knees and fold forward, clasp opposite elbows. Let the weight of the elbows, the arms, draw the arms, the sides of the torso down. Weight towards the toes. And change the clasp of the elbows and maybe start to straighten the legs a little bit or a lot. Keep allowing the head, the elbows to draw the torso down and long. And then release the elbows and we're going to reach around. You can either hook your thumbs or we're going to interlace our fingers, bend the elbows, draw the elbows towards each other. We've already got our heart open. Stay there, maybe start to extend the arms a little bit or a lot. So opening the front of the collarbones, still drifting the weight towards the toes, still lengthening the spine, but now also opening the heart, breathing it open. One more breath right here, and then slowly release the hands down. Put a little bend in your knees if you don't already have it. Weight in the heels, and then draw the tummy in, slowly unfolding. Standing one vertebrae at a time, rooting down to the feet, lengthening the spine, crown of the head. And then you're going to find your Tadasana mountain pose. I'm going to face you so you can see me. Big toes together, heels slightly apart, press the palms into one another. Lift the toes. See if you can find all four corners of each foot and then bring the toes down. Send your inner thighs back as you draw the tailbone down. And then on an inhale, reach the arms out and up, Urdhva Hastasana. So those nice straight arms again, right by the ears. Root down through the feet, look up, reach up through the fingertips. See how much length you can find. Bring the head back down. 
Then we're gonna take an inhale, and we're gonna take the left wrist with the right hand, inhale to find length, and then exhale, slowly bending over to the right. So root down through both feet. See if you can keep your torso facing forward. And then really draw that wrist out and away to find length through the side body. And then slowly come back up to center, release the wrist. Find the opposite wrist, inhale, reach up, find length, and then up and over, over to the left. Breathing, rooting down through the feet, draw the tailbone down, floating ribs in. Inhale, slowly come back up to center, release the wrist, and then exhale, lift the heart, cactus the arms back, little baby back bend. So draw your tailbone down, open the chest. And then inhale, dive straight up, palms together. Exhale, slow swan dive, all the way down, fold it in, Uttanasana. Take a breath here, lengthening your spine. And then on an inhale, come halfway up, Ardha Uttanasana. Place your hands somewhere where you can really lengthen the spine. So it could be thighs or shins, maybe your fingertips on the mat. Crown of the head reaching forward, groins pressing back, inhale here. And then exhale, keep that length as you fold it in. And then inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Let's try that a couple times on the breath. We'll see if I can say it. Here we go. Inhale, reach, find the left wrist. Exhale, over to the right. Inhale through center, over to the left. Inhale, back up. Exhale, shine the heart up. Inhale, dive up in the sky. Exhale, slowly over all the way down. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, long spine folds it in. Inhale, reach out and up all the way past the fingertips. Exhale, hands come down through heart center and keep it going one more time. Inhale, reach, find that left wrist. Exhale, pull it up and over. Inhale through center, opposite wrist. Exhale, up and over. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, open the heart, lift it. Inhale, dive straight up, length. Exhale, slowly, all the way over and down. Inhale, halfway up. And then exhale, plant your hands, step back, find your plank. If you've been here before, should be right there, find your plank. Now we're gonna come an inch forward. We're gonna do three chaturanga push-ups. You're welcome to bring your knees down. We only come halfway down to so the shoulders in line with the elbows, so here we go. Halfway down, press back up. Halfway down, press back up. Halfway down, press back up. Now come halfway down, hold it for a breath. And then slowly come all the way down. Untuck your toes, bring your legs together really nice. Forehead comes down, reach around behind, interlace the fingers or hook your thumbs. Bend the elbows and draw them towards each other to open the heart. Shoulder blades on the back, super straight legs, hug the outer legs in. Then inhale, keeping all 10 toes down, just lift the sternum, Shalabhasana. So the tummy's engaged, drawing the tailbone back. Stay here with the heart lifting, you might add the legs. Option to stay here or reach the arms out to the side like wings. And then option to stay here or little fingertips behind the occiput. Gaze is down, lift the sternum, right? We're finding the back of Manipura, the back of our center. One more breath and then exhale, turn your head to the side, arms come back, Woo! take a breath. <sighs> And then bring your forehead back to center. Let's try that again. Interlace your fingers the other way. Draw the elbows together, slightly bent, open the heart. Hug the outer ankles in and draw your tailbone back to the heels. Inhale, just the sternum comes up. So the legs of the anchor, heavy, reaching back. Maybe lift them. Maybe reach the arms out to the side. Maybe little fingertips behind the occiput. Lift the elbows, lift the legs, lift the sternum. One more breath. Ah. Exhale, turn the head the other way. Arms back. And if you wanna just shimmy the hips side to side to loosen up the sacrum. And then bring the forehead back down to center. Flat palms by your ribs. Same action in the legs. 
And then inhale, come up, just find your Bhujangasana Cobra. So pressing the inner hand, elbows in, shoulders down, slowly come down, take a breath. And then inhale, come right back up, Bhujangasana Cobra. Stay here or keep pressing up. Upward facing dog, draw the chest through. Reach the legs back, shoulders down, and then press the hands, lift the hips. Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. And then a little bend in the legs, look forward. We're gonna step or lightly hop to the front of the mat, feet together, inhale halfway up, long spine. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Let's flow through a few Surya Namaskar A's together. Inhale, reach. Exhale, slowly, all the way down. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, find plank. Come an inch forward, elbows in, halfway down, chaturanga. Over the toes, upward facing dog. Exhale the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Find your breath, find your center. You're welcome to put your knees down and plank. You're welcome to do cobra instead of up dog. You're welcome to rest in child's pose, listen to your body. Next exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or lightly hop, front of the mat. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down through heart center. Keep it going. Inhale, reach. Exhale, slow swan dive like you've got all the time in the world. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, plant the hands, step back, find plank. Come forward, halfway down, chaturanga. Over the toes, upward facing dog. Press the inner hand, open the chest. Exhale, the hips up and back, downward facing dog. Find your breath. So we'll do one more of those and just a note, if you're playing with jumping, we exhale the breath and hold it in the exhales when we jump, it helps to feel a little lighter. You can play with that. And you also might think of lifting from your center from Manipura as you jump. So exhale, bend the knees, look forward, step or lightly hop, inhale halfway up, exhale, fold it in, inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down through heart center. Keep it going on your own. Finish this one out. Slowly. You'll find plank. Go through a vinyasa or skip it. And finding your way back to downward facing dog. Spread the hands, straighten the arms, lift the hips. Then bring your feet together at the back of the mat. From the inner right side, we're gonna inhale the right leg back behind, three-legged dog. Take a moment to even the weight right to left. Both legs super straight like you're scissoring your inner thighs. See if you can keep the hips even. And then you can play if you'd like with lifting that left hand, reaching. You might bend that back knee. You can play with sweeping that left arm back alongside. And you might even play with reaching for that foot. It's up to you where you want to stop on that journey or what you want to play with, but see what's right here. Then you can go ahead and re-extend the leg, bring the hand down, take an inhale here, get even longer. Exhale, come forward, knee to nose. Inhale back, three-legged dog. Exhale, right knee outside, right tricep or elbow. Inhale back, three-legged dog. Exhale, cross under opposite elbow or tricep. Inhale back, three-legged dog. And then exhale down the center, knee to nose, and then step it all the way forward, long lunge. Get your foot all the way up there so the heel is right beneath that right knee. Firm your right hip back and in, and sink your hips. Let's see if you can keep some buoyancy in that inner back thigh. Reaching back through the back heel, forward through the crown of the head. Lift the heart, lift the gaze slightly. Really stand on that front heel. And then we're slowly gonna bring the back knee down. So keep it right here, but you're welcome to pat it. So just keep the hips coming forward, right? We're trying to find our way into that left hip flexor. So keep the back toes tucked, the tailbone drawing down and the pelvis coming forward. 
And then see if you can keep that if you place one hand and then the other on that front thigh. And then you're gonna press on that front thigh, not pressing the pelvis back, but drawing the tailbone down and lifting the lower belly. So it might not be visible, it might be more energetic, right? But there's a little bit more intensity here in this left hip flexor as we create that space in front of the belly. And then can you keep that space as you release the hands from the thigh and reach up. And like we first started, sitting in Sukhasana, reach through the side body. Look up, reach past your fingertips. Draw the palms together. Feel the sit bones drawing down, the heart lifting. Take an inhale here, and then exhale, hands come down to heart center. And then we're gonna take our right hand outside of our right thigh. We're gonna inhale the left arm up. We're gonna come forward and across on a diagonal to hook that elbow outside that front knee and find our prayer twist. So press the palms together, draw that right hip back, lift the heart into your joined hands, shear the head back, twist at the waist. You can stay here or you might play with straightening that back knee. So breathe, turn, balance, maybe smile. If you've got that straight back leg, slowly bring that back knee down. And then on an inhale, we're gonna come back up to center. Both hands down to frame the front foot. Flex that front foot and slowly shift your hips back, finding your Ardha Hanumanasana. So half splits. So you're welcome to use two blocks to be here if you really wanna work on that long spine. Maybe the hands come down towards the mat. Maybe you play with folding it in, but keep drawing the tailbone, the groins back, crown of the head forward, and offering breath to that right hamstring. Seeing what's right here. And then on an inhale, come back up. We're gonna rebend that front leg, straighten the back leg, and then move the right foot a little bit to the right. So you've got hip distance between your feet. Draw that right hip back and in. And inhale, come on up, find your crescent lunge. So again, we're trying to draw the tailbone back and lift the belly as we draw that right hip back and that left hip forward, bending strongly in that front knee. And then stay here, we're just gonna open the arms out to the side and then we're gonna bring the left arm under and let's find our eagle arm. So we're lifting the elbows, dropping the shoulders down, moving the hands away from the face, and then on an inhale, just straighten that front leg. Exhale, slowly rebend, drawing that right hip back. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. One more. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. And then release your hands. Reach out and up. Inhale, touch at the top. And then exhale, hands come down through heart center. Plant your hands, step back, find plank. Come forward and go through your vinyasa. Woo. And just take a breath here and dog. Notice how your body's doing. Maybe there's a difference right to left. See what's here and then bring the feet together at the back of the mat. And we're gonna inhale the left leg straight back behind into our three-legged dog. So you wanna draw the outer arms and the outer legs in. Balance right to left in the hands. Keep drawing that right hip back. Keep lifting from that inner left hip. And then if you wanna play with extending the right arm or and or bending that back knee, then you might sweep the right arm alongside the body, reaching straight back, or you might find those toes. They're there somewhere. Seeing if it's a, a day to play or fall or laugh or shake, re-extending that back leg, right arm comes forward, inhale, find length, and then exhale, come forward, knee to nose. Inhale back, three-legged dog. Exhale, left knee outside, left elbow. Inhale back, three-legged dog. Exhale, cross under, find the opposite elbow. Inhale, lift back. And then exhale, come forward, knee to nose, and then step all the way through. Long lunge, Woo. Weight in that front heel. Firm this left hip back and in. It likes to swing out on all of us. Lifting that inner thigh, letting it be buoyant, even as you sink the hips. 
reach through the back heel, lift the sternum, and then we're gonna slowly bring that back knee down. Keep it right here with the toes tucked, pat it if you need it. Just start to let the hips sink even a little bit more forward. Finding our way into that right hip flexor, drawing the tailbone down. And then can you keep the hips this forward? We're just gonna place our hands on that left thigh and start to press back, right? To draw the waist, the belly back. Even as the tailbone keeps drawing down, we lift the heart. And then keeping that space we've just created, reaching the arms out and up, full Anjaneyasana. Turn the palms in. Lift through the side body. Start to look up with the whole front body. Up the armpits, the front of the arms, up past the fingertips, touch the palms. Sink the hips, reach the hands, inhale here, and then exhale, hands come down to heart center. Then we're gonna take that left hand outside the left thigh. Inhale, the right arm up, come forward and on a diagonal, so you can cross that elbow outside the knee, press the palms together, and then lift the waist, turn, keep reaching with the crown of your head, shear the head back slightly, stay right here, or you might play with straightening that back leg. Playing with balance, with a twist, with breath, finding steadiness even in the effort. Can you also find ease? You've got that back leg straight, slowly bringing it down. Take an inhale to come up to center. Exhale, hands come down to frame the front foot. Flex the left foot, just shift the hips back. Ardha Hanumanasana. Make choices, where do you want the hands? How high do you wanna stay up? Do you wanna play with folding in? Take your time, take some breaths. Landing in this shape, seeing it how it informs you before this too passes. So enjoy what's here, if you can. And then slowly lift the head, rebend the front foot, Straighten the back foot and then bring that left foot a little bit to the left so we're not coming up on a tight rope. Firm that left hip back, weight in the front heel, and then inhale. Come on up, find your crescent lunge. So we're really bending in the front knee, drawing the left hip back, the right hip forward. Lift the belly as much as you can, I know it's hard. And then we're just gonna open the arms out to the side, bring that right arm under, and find your Garudasana arms, lifting the elbows, Dropping the shoulders, moving the hands away from the face. And then on an inhale, straighten that front leg. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. One more. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. And then release the hands, sweep them out and up. Inhale, reach. And then exhale, let it go. Hands come down through heart center. Frame the front foot, step back, find your plank, go through a vinyasa or skip, go straight to downward facing dog. You might take a breath or two in child's pose. All of us meeting in Adha Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Just get steady here. Dog becomes this wonderful resting pose. We keep landing here throughout the practice. Then we're gonna bring our knees down. We're gonna interlace our fingers, place them down on the mat, and we're gonna get our shoulders right, our elbows right under our shoulders. Press your outer wrist creases firmly down into the mat. And then you're gonna step the right foot all the way back and the left foot all the way back. And you're here you are in your dolphin plank. So now what's your tendency? Some of us tend to sink the belly down. I know I have a tendency to push the, put the butt up. So see if you can find as much as possible that straight long line in your body. Really karate chop the outer wrists, the outer forearms down. Breathe. Now we're gonna slowly walk the feet into dolphin. Take little dolphin steps, walk your feet in. Legs are as straight as possible and then notice there's a tendency as we walk the feet in for the head to get shoved forward. You wanna press the outer forearms down to lift the head back and up. Lift the hips back and up. Open up under the armpits. Breathe. 
And bring your feet together from the inner right thigh. Inhale the right leg. Three legged or one legged dolphin. Pressing the forearms down to lift the head, lengthen under the armpit, slowly bring that right foot down, find center, and then inhale the left leg straight up. I think I would call this one legged dolphin, one finned dolphin, not sure. Breathe it open, slowly bring that left foot down. And then we're gonna start walking the feet back out toward dolphin plank. Take a breath here. Steadiness, will, power, transformation. Nice, and then slowly bring your knees down. Under your hands, walk the hands back, tuck your toes. We're just gonna press back into this little squat. And then we're gonna open the knees. And then just let your torso come down. Maybe the elbows even come down, the forearms come down between your open knees. Malasana with this forward fold. And then can you hug your knees in around, might be your triceps or your elbows or your shoulders. Press them in, hug yourself with the inner knees. Breathe, lengthen the back of the spine. And we're just gonna pick the head up. We're gonna practice our Bakasana crow pose. So you wanna have hands shoulder distance, spread the fingers. The mechanism here is to really hug the elbows in. We don't wanna let them go out. So lift the hips and get your knees on your elbows or behind your triceps or in your armpits and then start to shift forward and you might play with lifting one foot and then the other. You might play with straightening the arms a little bit, bring the feet up towards the tush. You might lift the gaze, look forward, fly. A few more breaths. Keep drawing the tummy in, hugging the elbows in and then slowly bring the feet down. Inhale, come halfway up the straight legs. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Tadasana, really nice. Okay, so you at the front of your mat, I'm gonna face you, but let's have our two blocks at the front of the mat just in case. Just set them up so they're there for you as you stand at the front of the mat in Tadasana. Hands on the hips. So we're gonna step the left foot back about three and a half feet, lining up heel to heel or a little bit wider. And then you wanna turn that back foot in really strongly, almost parallel. We wanna be able to bring this left hip forward, right? So that's how much that back foot has to turn in. Get your hips even, get your shoulders even, squared facing forward. Now, we're gonna inhale the arms out to the side. We're gonna bring that left arm up, palm turns back, reach down, pat our upper back. And then we're gonna internally rotate the right, reach around and find your Gomukhasana arms. And this is a great place for a strap if your hands don't reach. So get your strap if they don't quite connect. So you're connecting fingertips or strap. Then draw the tailbone down, lift the heart, inhale. And on an exhale, start to come forward. So send the groins back, keep drawing that right hip back. And you're gonna come out, over that front leg, weight in the back foot. Breathe, stay here, or you might be able to fold in a little bit, go slowly, right? You're listening to your hamstrings, that right hamstring, but also your shoulders. So we're not forcing anything, we're just finding edges, we're playing, we're breathing. Oh. And then slowly, you can put a little bend in that front knee, press in that foot, slowly come all the way back up. Nice tall spine, release your clasp, release your strap down if you have it. You're gonna reach that left arm up, right hand on the hip. So we want the hip squared again. We're coming right back down. So inhale, find length. Exhale, reach out, like you're reaching out for something or someone you really love, all the way out there. Come so that you're parallel with the floor, take an inhale here, and then you're gonna come into twisting triangle, Parita Trikonasana. You can choose the block inside or outside that front foot at any height. You might be able to bring the hand down. Start with your hand on your sacrum for a minute, just so that it's even. Twist with your hand on your sacrum and then reach that right arm straight up. So you're pressing into both feet, drawing that right hip back lengthening the spine, twisting at the waist, just like we've done several times in this practice. 
breathe it open. And then slowly look down, bring that right hand down, slight bend in the front knee so you can set the back foot in, feet together. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep the arms out and up. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Maybe just notice the difference in the two sides of the body. It's very interesting. Okay, hands on the hips. Let's step the right foot back, about three and a half feet. Look down, you wanna line up heel to heel or a little wider and then turn that back foot in so strongly, right? You can bring this right hip forward and they're square. Draw your tailbone down, lift your heart. And then we're gonna reach the arms out to the side. We're gonna bring the right arm up, palm back. Touch your upper back. Internally rotate the left, reach around. You might need a strap on this side or not. Check it out. But you wanna have a connector with your hands in order to be able to move into the pose and open the shoulders. So inhale here, tailbone down. Exhale, send the hips back. Keep drawing that left hip back. Come out over that front leg. Keep weight in that back foot. You can stay parallel or you might start to fold in, but go slowly and listen to that left hamstring. Listen to both shoulders. Breathe. Keep drawing that left hip back. Can you keep unfurling the spine? Keep opening the heart. Now slight that in that front leg so you can press down on that front foot. Slowly come back up. Release the clasp. Left hand comes to the left hip, right hand up. Inhale, length. Now we're coming right back out. You've got this hand on the left hip to draw it back. Reach out like you're reaching for something you love. You value sweet and delicious right there, and then make a choice about where you want that right hand to come down inside or outside that front foot on a block, and then hand on the sacrum, get the sacrum even. Press down in your block or the floor with that right hand, and then open up, twist to the left. Keep sending the hips back, lengthening the spine, drawing the shoulder blades on the back, twisting and opening. And then look down, left hand comes down, slight bend in that front leg, step the back foot forward, inhale halfway up, exhale forward fold, inhale, sweep the arms out and up, reach tall. Exhale, hands come down to heart center. Just close your eyes for a moment. Just drop into yourself, see what's right here. Energy, heat sensation, vibration, maybe some dynamism in the stillness. Blink your eyes open. We're just gonna slowly squat down. Just support yourself, nice tall spine, coming down. And then let's have a seat. And let's come into our Dandasana, and I would like you to support your hips. So as many times as you need to fold your blanket or towel or what you have for some elevation for the hips, so you can sit in your staff pose, right? Drawing the back body in, nice tall spine. So let's bend the right leg, inner foot on the opposite inner thigh, and get the hips even. And if this right knee is coming up super high, which it does for many of us, I would just give it some support. Nice to have your strap nearby in case you're gonna to wanna to use that. So we're going into Janu Shirsasana. So both sit bones down, spine tall, Inhale the arms out and up, and then exhale, hinging at the hips. It's that sending the groins back, lifting the heart, coming out. You might use your strap right here around the ball of your foot. Oh, and just lift. You can lengthen the spine and that front leg beautifully. You might do that holding your toes. You might have the space in your body to start to come forward. So listen to what's right for you on this side, Janu Shirshasana. Keep sending the sit bones back and down. It's a little bit of a twist, right? To aim the heart towards that front big toe. And then can you be here and breathe? Now inhale, lengthen to come up. Use your hands, give yourself a little bit of support. So now we're gonna bend the left leg. We're gonna bring that right knee in a little bit. I'm gonna do this to the side. 
And we're gonna take one hand on either side of, now it's the left foot. And we're gonna lift that foot. So here's the work. Draw your back body into the front body, right, to take that big curve out of the lower back. And then can you draw your knee in under your armpit? And just feel these coordinates, this shape, this nice tall spine with this hip opening. Now you can stay with the leg bent, or if you can stay right here, right? Don't let there be a change in the spine if you can. Keep it long as you play with extending that left leg. So just play with extending it up. Again, there's that little bit of twist as you aim your heart towards the big toe. Now we're gonna go into a twist. So whether you have your foot leg bent or straight, you're gonna take that right hand outside the left foot, Keep your hips quiet. You're just twisting at the waist, turning to the side, maybe looking back. See what's right here. Both sit bones rooting down, crown of the head reaching up, and then stay here, just look forward. Can you let go of that foot and reach your arms and let it go? Really nice. And let's find our Dandasana on the other side. Legs nice and long, open the backs of the knees, reach to the inner and the outer foot, tall spine. And we're gonna bend the left leg. Sole of the foot comes inside. Get your hips even, and get up on your sit bones. Inhale, reach the arms out and up. And then exhale, keeping that long spine like you're reaching forward again. Long spine, out, out, out. Then you might use a strap. You might find some toes. You might draw yourself down and in. But even as you come down, if you make that choice to fold, can you keep lengthening the spine? See how long, crown of the head reaching forward, breathing. One more breath here. And then inhale, lengthen to come up, support yourself a little bit with your hands. I'm just gonna move that so I can show you. You're gonna bend the right leg, draw that left knee in a little bit, get on both sit bones, draw the spine tall, one hand on either side of that front foot. Can you keep that tall spine as you lift the foot, as you draw the knee in towards the armpit? So just stay here, draw the sacrum in, lift the crown of the head. Now see if you can feel that nice straight line you've created. Can you keep that? It's not easy, it's a real question. <laughs> I, it's a lot of work. Keep that as you play with straightening that right leg. Lift the sternum. Open the back of that leg. Oh, be right here for a moment. And then we're going to take that left hand outside the right foot. You can point or flex that foot. Lots of options. And then just stay anchored in your hips, but turn at the waist. Reach the arm back. Draw the back of the sacrum in. Reach the crown of the head. Maybe look back. And then slowly, staying right here, look forward, release the foot. Can you reach the arms up? And then let it come down. Really nice. Shake it out. And then let's come. So we're in Dandasana with our heels right at the front of the mat. You might already be there. Inhale the arms out and up. Let's even it out in our Paschimottanasana. So coming forward, lifting the heart, maybe using your strap. We use the strap, right? We can lift and lengthen and pull the lower back in, or you might be finding your toes or folding forward. Breathe, be right here. Soften the belly, soften the face. And then inhale, slowly come up, lengthen the spine, give yourself some support. Bend your knees with your heels still at the front of the mat. Reach your arms forward, and then we'll use that nice awake belly to support ourselves as we slowly, slowly roll down. All the way down. Walk the feet in so they're hips distance and parallel, pretty close to the tush. Lift the toes, press the inner and the outer edges of the feet. Bring the toes back down, and then really press the big toe mount in the inner heel to slowly start to lift the pelvis up into our bridge. So slowly lift the pelvis. Once you've got it lifted, you can hold the sides of the mat to draw the shoulder blades underneath. That foot can feel yummy. You can bend the elbows down like robot arms to push the elbows down. 
to lift the whole back body, or you might reach underneath, interlace your fingers, and then roll the outside of one shoulder and then the other underneath. Maybe you could even press the palms together or limit the space between the palms and stand on the inner feet. Don't clench the glutes. Really see if you can work on standing and pressing down to lift the pelvis rather than gripping your buttocks. Lift and open. Satu Bandha. Now stay right here. We're just gonna reach the arms up and over, backs of the palms down. And now from the upper spine, slowly uncoil, one vertebrae at a time. Let the sacred come down. Just stay here for a moment. Take a breath. And now choices. You can do another bridge pose. And you might choose to put a block under your sacrum at any height if you'd like to do a restorative bridge. Or believe it or not, we have opened everything we need to for our Urdhva Dhanurasana. So if you want to throw in one wheel, very powerful for Manipura, let's do it. So make your choice. Bridge again or set the feet up hips distance. Take your palms, flip them over flat so the fingertips are pointing by your shoulders and then hug your elbows in. Your elbows should be the distance of your shoulders. If this is really hard, you might just stay here and breathe and work on getting this position. Otherwise, you're gonna lift the pelvis. Now press your hands down. We're just gonna to come to the crown of the head. So press the hands, come to the crown of the head and re-hug your elbows in and move your heart back towards the wall where you're facing and then keep the heart coming in that direction as you press down to come up and find your Urdhva Dhanurasana wheel pose. Opening up the whole front body, standing on the inner and the outer foot, spreading the weight across both hands. Open your heart, breathe wherever you are. And then if you're in wheel, we lift the head up, Bend the elbows, and the first thing that comes down is the back of our shoulders. If you're in bridge, slowly come down. Maybe remove the block. Let's all meet in constructive rest and just land here for a moment. Take the breath. And then we're going to reach the arms straight out to the sides. Inhale here, and then exhale. Let both knees come over to the right. Just loosening up the sacrum a little bit. You can stay right here, or you can reach the arms overhead. Maybe find one of the wrists and pull. Lengthen to the side body as you draw that left hip down. If you've got the arms overhead, reach them straight back out. And bring the knees back up to center. Take an inhale here. On an exhale, knees come down to the left. So outer left foot, inner right. Again, stay with arms out or reach overhead. Maybe find the opposite wrist. A little bit of a stretch, draw that right hip down. If you've got the wrists overhead, arms come back out to the side. Slowly bring the knees back up to center. So let's find our strap. And we're gonna start here in constructive rest. And we're gonna take the strap and we're gonna place it around Usually we do the ball of the foot on the right foot to start, but we're going to do down closer to the heel. So between the heel and the arch, you're going to press the leg straight up. So I'm not coming down towards you. You can keep this left leg bent or you can straighten it. And you're going to draw the strap straight down. So really drawing the head of the femur down into the hip socket. And then press the right sit bone down and away towards your opposite heel. So it's a we actually are trying to create some space here in our sacrum and hip socket more than open our hamstring because we already opened our hamstring as you well are aware. So it's the natural curve of the back, both feet flexed, both legs straight, and then firming that right sit bone towards the wall where your opposite foot is away from you at the bottom of your body. And then take both straps in your right hand, left palm flat on your left, um, hip bone. Externally rotate the right leg. Keep this left hip anchored as you slowly open from the inner seam of the leg, the right leg, out to the side. Just a few breaths here, opening that inner groin, inner leg. Keep that left hip anchored, heart open. Slowly bring that right leg all the way back up. 
And we're going to take both bits of strap in our left hand, and you're going to take your right thumb and you're going to press it down into that right hip crease. So you're helping to move that sit bone down and away towards the opposite heel. Keep your left toes facing up and flexed as you just cross that right leg a little bit. We're going for the piriformis. Natural curve of the back, firming the right sit bone down and away. A little bit of cross. See what's right here. <sighs> then release that. Let the foot come back up. Release the strap. Bend the left leg. And then we're going to bend the right knee, cross the ankle just beneath the kneecap. Really important to flex the right knee here. And then you're going to thread your hands either behind the, the thigh, or you might get your hands in front of the shin. So just take a few breaths in this resting pigeon. Both feet flexed. And you could stay still here, or you could gently rock that left knee forward and back, maybe an inch or two. It can feel really nice to lubricate the hip joints, so your choice. A few more breaths, whether you're moving or still. Cooling down, letting the front body start to calm, the front of the brain calm. And then slowly release that side, uncross the right, take a breath in constructive rest. And then let's find our strap. Let's just open and find the other side. So extending the left leg, again, strap more towards the heel and the arch. See if you can get that left leg straight up. Flex both feet. You can keep the right leg bent or you can straighten it out. And then really draw both bits of the strap down, firming the head of the femur down into the left hip socket. But then press this left sit bone down and away to create more space through the hip socket and the sacrum. Just be here and breathe. Shoulders relax back into the earth. Again, natural curve of this lower spine. That's what helps to create space here in the sacrum. See what's right here. And then we're going to take both bits of the strap in the left hand, right hand flat on that right hip bone, externally rotate that left leg, and then keeping the right hip planted, slowly open that left leg out to the side, reaching from the inner leg out through the inner foot. As soon as that right hip starts to move, right, then you need to stop, back off, re-anchor that hip. Breathe it open. And then slowly bring it right back up to center. Change your hands with the strap, left thumb, right in that hip crease. Now firmly push it down, aiming that left sit bone towards your opposite heel. Right foot flex, toes up. Keep it just like that as you start to cross. So one side's usually tighter for us than the other. So for me, this is my really tight side. I can go like an inch, but that's good because then it's right there I can start to open. Some of you might be able to cross more, but make sure that right foot doesn't turn out. That means you've gone too far. Just be here and breathe. Keep firming that left sit bone down and away, lengthening that back side of the sacrum. One more breath, and then slowly bring that foot back up. Release the strap, bend the right leg, bend the left, cross the ankle just beneath the kneecap, really flex that left foot, and then draw that right thigh in, find your clasp, both feet flexed, and then you could choose in this resting pigeon just to be nice and still, or you might find that gentle rocking motion to lubricate the hip joint. Heart quiet, eyes quiet. And then slowly release, let the foot come down, uncross the left. Let's take a moment landing here. Constructive rest. And then if you please find one of your blocks, we're going to press our feet down just enough to slide the block in the long, low way right under the sacrum. And again, see if you can find that natural curve. We're not overly arching. We're not flattening the sacrum down. Arms straight out. Draw the shoulder blades underneath, and then just lift one knee straight up and the other knee straight up. Make sure you've got stability here. And then if you'd like, go ahead and straighten the legs. Might close the eyes. And then deep breaths, allowing the belly to be soft. 
expanding deep inside yourself. Eyes soft and quiet. Just bringing awareness as you breathe right to the lower chakra triangle. So the first chakra at the base of the spine and the second chakra in the lower belly and then Manipura lustrous jewel at the solar plexus. So noticing if you feel spacious or tight, hot or cool, any sensations or colors or images, just offering hospitality to whatever is right here in this moment, just for a few more breaths. And then gently blinking your eyes open and bending one knee and then the other, and bringing one foot down and then the other, pressing the feet into the earth to lift the hips, slide the block out, sacrum comes down. And then how do you want to set up for your final pose? So moving props out of the way, getting whatever props you need, Classical final pose is legs long, about hip distance. We let the feet flop open. Arms down by the side, away from the body, or they can even be straight out. Nice to press the back of the head down. Draw the shoulder blades slightly underneath the heart to support it. Close the eyes. You might cover the eyes. Might cover your body. If you have any uncomfortable sensation in your lumbar spine, your lower back, you can place something behind your knee, or you can come into Sutta Baddha Konasana. But wherever you are, this is the pose of surrender. So any last wiggle or getting into position so you can really let go, give your weight to the earth, Allow your face to be soft, the throat to be soft, the heart to be soft. Letting yourself quiet down into Shavasana.
And then slowly starting to bring your awareness back in. Finding a deeper breath or allowing a deeper breath to find you. Maybe wiggling fingers or toes and just noticing what is it like to come back in the body, reassuming this mass, this presence. Maybe a stretch if that feels good. And then as you're ready, bending the knees, reaching the right arm out overhead, slowly letting the knees come down to the right side, just finding this gentle fetal position, pausing for a moment. And keeping the eyes closed, pressing the left palm down, letting the head be the last to come up as you bring yourself round to a final comfortable seat position where you can just let the sit bones come down, the spine tall, relax the hands down, relax the shoulders. Staying inside just as you are for a few breaths. Honoring this beautiful practice, the choice you make to come to your mat. And lifting the palms, joining them together. Namaste. What joy. Thank you. Be well.